We're right here. Like, right, what the fuck's wrong with you? So, not so long ago, um, just before, just after Christmas actually, sorry, uh, myself and a friend of mine, we went and went on a little, uh, a little bike dealership crawl around Plymouth. And, um, we started at, uh, Harley Davidson and Triumph, because they're, uh, beside each other. And then went on to, um, no, sorry, we started in, um, CMS, the little, uh, used bike shop. Uh, interesting shop. It's a lovely shop, actually. They're really nice guys. A bit hit and miss on corners here when you go in there, I'm on the bikes. Um, but you can get some good little bargains there, and there were some nice, uh, some nice bikes when we were in there. Some nice little uh, sort of dirt bike type things. So we started there, and then we went to uh, Triumph. The Triumph first, because we're both Triumph fans. Then Harley Davidson, which crossed the car park from them, and then out to GTs and did the various uh, manufacturers out in GTs. A yeah, great day, yeah. Having a look at different bikes. Triumph was good fun for both of us. Because uh, we both love our Triumphs. He currently owns a, uh, a Triumph Tiger 900. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's good. He got his heart broken slightly, unfortunately. Because um, he really likes the Scrambler. The Scrambler 900, is it? Um, not the new one. Not the, not the Street Scrambler. The old, proper, dedicated Scrambler. Um, and he'd been wanting to buy one new. But they're stopping production. Um... In fact, they've stopped production, and uh, yeah, they're running out of stock a lot faster than he'd hoped. Because he's still not in a position to buy it. And um, the people in Triumph were telling us that, I don't know, that car's fucked. Oh, no, this bonnet's open. Uh, yeah, sorry. They, they were telling us that the factories run out of scramblers already, they've used up their stock, and they had one scrambler in there, um, and it was the last one they're going to get. So yeah, there was a sad moment for him because uh, he got to, like, that's his dream was to go and buy a brand new Scrambler from Triumph and have a brand new bike, a fast brand new bike he's owned. Um, other than his, his scooter, which I think was brand new. Uh, but yeah, it's going to have to be used on like it now because there's just, it's just not the, not the demand for them. I don't know, I don't know if it's demand or if it's Euro 4 or what, but it's not time, so we haven't, uh, he sat on that for a while and I had to drag him away. <laughs> We've got to check out some of the Bonnies upstairs and Thruxton's. Some of the enormous um, Sprints. I don't know what Sprint 1050s are they? Bloody big bikes. I hadn't seen them in the flesh before. And that thing was king huge. <laughs> like, Jesus. They're a good looking bike though, you know, styling wise. But yeah, it's good fun. <laughs> oh, and they had, they had a, uh, a Triton there, you know, one of the Norton Triumphs. And in true British engineering fashion, they had a massive fucking puddle of oil beneath it. All over the, all over their tiles on the floor. Although, oh yeah, that, that sums up fucking British engineering. <laughs> like, what a shit show. I mean, really. Then we went to Harley. And, um... So I like cruisers. I'm sure um, those of you who've been watching for a while know I like cruisers. I used to own a cruiser. I'd love to own another cruiser. But I don't like Harleys. I don't know. I think it's just the image. Like, there's too much badge and not enough bike. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Like, it's just, it just something doesn't do it for me. And they seem so unrefined and agricultural. And, like, the amount of money you pay for them is just ridiculous. And you don't get much back. I mean, we were looking at... We were there and I sat on, I sat on 20 grand's worth of um, V-Rod. And actually, that, the V-Rod I do like. Because that thing is just like stupid. It's just like stupid muscle weight, and I love it. <laughs> My foot pegs on that were ridiculous. It was like a fucking deck chair. Was... <laughs> as I said, like, I'm used to cruiser foot pegs, but as much as my little Virago was a very small bike in terms of frame and everything. But um, oh, that was yeah, it was nuts. It was quite a reach. Yeah, and then, actually, I was stood beside it later, and I said to um, my friend, I was like, oh, look, this bike doesn't have any uh, 
I need pinion pegs, got pinion seat, no pinion pegs. Then I realised the reason I was getting confused is the pinion pegs were where the foot pegs, the normal foot pegs are on a normal bike. And I just wasn't looking that far forward on the bike to see the other foot pegs. Me and my friend, you know, we're not like, <laughs> we're by no means that knowledgeable about bikes, he's a lot more knowledgeable than I am, but we're both walking around Harley, uh, we're chatting to the people working there who are nice enough, Christ on the bike, nice enough. But we're just walking around and he says to me, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. And I'm just like, yes, yeah, same. We're walking around and we're like, you could take the tags off these bikes. We couldn't name them, you know, apart from maybe like the big road light because that's uh, somewhat distinctive and the V-Rod because that's quite distinctive. But even then, is it a road glide? Is it a street glide? Is it an electric glide? Is it, you know. And we're walking around like, I feel like such an idiot here because I don't, I don't know any of these bikes. Like if I go to, when I go to GTs afterwards, I was walking around there and I could name most of the bikes. I'd walk around and go, oh yeah, that's a, that's a CB650, Honda, or, oh, that's a Kawasaki's 800, great. I walk around Harley, like, yep, yep, that's a, that's a Harley. Yep. <laughs> they said to us, oh, um, if you want to sit on a bike, that's cool, but just tell us first, because some of them have alarms on and such. We're like, yeah, sure, and I go, can I sit on this V-Rod? He's like, yeah, yeah, that's fine, there's no alarm on that. And of course I'll sit down and it goes, whoop, whoop. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> He's like, get the fuck off. <laughs> so I had to go and unlock it. Luckily we didn't set the full alarm off because that would have been deafening in there. We went to GT's and I sat on a bike I hadn't really heard of. It was called the the XV950R. Here, it's, it's the Yamaha Bolt in America and Australia, I think, talking to Fat Cruiser. Yeah. <laughs> hey buddy, by the way, if you're watching. Um, yeah, sat on that, I fucking loved it. It's so cool. It's like a little, uh, they call it a bobber. I don't know, it's, it's quite fair, actually. It's a small cruiser. And it's just, it's fucking great. It's a really good looking bike. It's, uh, it's well made. And, we, like, we came straight from Harley, looking at, you know, the 48s and the Sportsters and stuff. And we came and sat on this, and we are just like, this is just nicer. But the suspension's quite good for a cruise on the back and it's got ABS and all of this good stuff <laughs> look at the smile I got from that scooter guy that was fantastic I'm enjoying the sun I think well I say sun it's fucking grey as fuck over there but you know what I mean but yeah so this thing I fucking loved it it's really cool the only slow worry is it's, it's an air cooled engine and because the engine's it's slightly skewed it's slightly like on the cock so your left hand cylinder head comes out slightly and um, you'd have to remember to lift your leg out before putting it down when you stop because otherwise you're going to burn your thigh on on the cylinder head on top of the cylinder. But yeah, it's a really nice little bike. It's belt drive, which would be quite nice. I really dig it. The dash just lets it down a bit though. It's a digital dash. It's quite, it's quite you know, simple and refined and, you know, clean. But there's just not enough information, like there's no rev kinds, uh, there's no fuel gauge, it's just like speed, miles, and the idiot lights, and that's it. I think I'd want a little more than that myself. And that brings me to the next thing I want to talk about, which is um, finance versus non-finance. See, I've never really... Finance scares me. It, it really scares me. Because uh, if you've watched my last video, I assume I upload these in the right order. You know that I've got, uh, you know, some money issues at the moment. And I might not be able to keep this bike on the road um, shortly. But when I do run out of money, I'm not going to lose the bike. Like, I'll stick the bike in the shed that will stay there until I can afford to put some insurance on it. And equally, if later on in the year it happened again, um, I could just stick it in the shed and then not put, like, not put any fuel in it for a, a week or two weeks. And then, you know, all good. Like... Well, with finance, if you get made redundant, you fuck something up and you, you lose your job and you, and you miss a payment, you're going to lose your fucking bike. They're going to take your bike away from you. It's crazy. It's just such a, a terrifying prospect that well, it's so easy to happen. But how many people do you know who've lost their jobs from doing nothing wrong just from the company downsizing or... You know, the company changed position or, you know, whatever. It's so easy to happen. There's nothing you can do to prevent it. And, yeah, you can, if you work hard enough and you get lucky, you can point back into a different job. But not everyone does. Or what if you get sick? You know, what if you can't work for? If you hurt yourself? I don't know what sort of leeway you get. I don't know, like, 
if, they, if you can go and beg them, oh, I'll give you the money next month, honest. I don't know how it works, I, mean, I didn't really ask the guy. But I know, I know in Harley Davidson, he was, he was sending it this whole, like, oh, he spent like 20 minutes talking to us about this different finance deals, you can have a Harley for fucking 150 quid a month, how much it was, and it's a chance to own a Harley where I'm just splashed the mass amount of money up front. Because, of course, that's the flip side of it, is I bought this bike outright, because I bought it used, and I spent, uh, you know, I've spent like a grand on it. But, if I want to buy, all right, we use that, we use that cruise I sat on, the XV. If I wanted to buy that outright, it was 799 I think it was 799 off top of my head. So we'll call that eight grand, right? If I wanted to buy that outright, I'd have to pull eight grand out of my ass at once, you know, in a lump. And then the insurance and the tax and all that stuff. So as much as I own it outright then, still, I mean, and like, I know you can haggle it, especially if you're buying in one lump sum, you could probably be like, yo, dude, I'll give you like, you know, I'll give you this month right now and the bike's gone, then people will probably go for it, but it prices me out of a lot of newer bikes and better quality bikes because it's just such a lump and an investment. And it's the thing with finance, well, if, the finance on that bike, by the time you've paid it off, which takes about a thousand years, incidentally, but by the time you've done it, the final cost is, is I think it was about nine grand, it was like nine two. So you're paying so much more by spreading it out over this time. So in terms of my next bike, we're hitching a long way off, incidentally, but hopefully this year, that's what I'm saying to myself, I'm going to be buying it Outright, it'll be, it'll be a used bike, and it won't be anywhere near showroom fucking prices, because you know what they're like. The reason I do that, and the reason I pay my insurance yearly, rather than monthly, is um, I take the hit, I take the massive, I've just bought a bike, and I've put insurance on it for a year, and I've done my tax for a year, an MOT, but after that, it's just consumables, it's just fuel and, and shit that wears out, you know? And it's just that peace of mind of not having to be like, oh shit, I've paid my insurance this month and I've uh, got to make sure I've got enough money left to pay me my finance payments. And Yeah, so what do you guys think? Do you guys do you guys get your bikes from finance or do you get them outright like me? Or... And like, what happens if you, if you miss your payment? Do you just lose your bike? I mean, I'm somewhat naive, so I don't really know how it all works. I don't know if they can take the bike and you can pick it up later, or if they just take it and they're like, yeah, you fucked up, dude, but well, here's your bike gone.